I called my mom the other day to let her know that I was doing this talk, and after having to explain what TED was, uh, naturally she asked what I was talking about. And so I told her, cannibalizing your friends and family. And there was a pause, and I could hear her breathing, and it had that judgy kind of, what are you doing, son, breathing that she gets with me a lot of the time. And she said, cannibalizing your pets? And I told her, no, I wouldn't be eating my dog, Tina. I said, cannibalizing your friends and family. And there was another, even judgier pause. And finally, oh, and that was the end of that. That was the end of the conversation, we moved on. And that, as a story, isn't the best story. It's, if you saw it on paper, if I was writing that out, it wouldn't be that good. It'd be pretty bland and boring, actually. And that's what I wanna talk about, is being able to find the important details in your life that you can use for a story um, because we all have them and it's a matter of being able to know where to look for them and how to use them. And if we don't do that, if we just tell our own full story, our life story, um, just detail after detail after detail, what, uh, what creative writing professors sometimes call um, writing what you know, I don't think that's getting at all of it. Instead, if I were to do that, if I were to write my own story, no one would read it. My mom would, but it's more, I think, to keep tabs on me than anything. But outside of that, no one would read it. It would be boring. Um, instead, you have, to, you have to cannibalize your own life. You have to cannibalize the lives of your friends and your family and anyone you come into uh, interaction with on a daily basis. Um, as a side note, don't lead off with that on a first date. Uh, your potential significant other probably wouldn't like the fact that you're telling them that you may or may not use everything they say or do in a story at any point. Um, if you're lucky, you may just, they may just walk away. If you're not, glass of wine to the face, slap, who knows? That, I mean, that would be a story right there, but it's not how you want to get to that. Um, this, this idea of cannibalizing and ripping apart your own life is nothing new. Uh, writers have been doing it for ages. Uh, Ernest Hemingway was very, very well known for doing this. If you look at The Sun Also Rises, uh, one of his most famous novels, his main character in the early drafts, the main character's name is Jake Barnes, he was named Hem. And so right there, we have that connection. And knowing what we do know about Ernest Hemingway, we have, we know how close those things are. Did he date someone named Brett Ashley and go on this long drinking binge? Probably in some ways he did that at some point since he was a prodigious drinker, pro prodigious drinker. but those, that order, those things, not so much. He pulled and he picked and he moved and he did all of these things to have a story that works, a story that is memorable. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking to be able to move the details around so that you have a story that people will remember. Um, as Sonia said, I wrote a novel recently uh, by the name of Dogs, and I played with this idea often. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read a brief passage, and I'm gonna break it down and sort of go through how I did that in that novel. So as far as context, um, Ben is the main character of the book, and he's dressed as Clifford the Big Red Dog with a giant poofy helmet hat thing on right now in the scene. So Ben stood in front of the door to the basement, waiting there to pop out at the party goers. Not that he was scary, he knew that, but it was Halloween and that's what kids did, right? The door was usually locked, and so when Ben was surprised when after a moment, as he popped out at his father, who was in the middle of flailing to find a wall to steady himself, Ben was staring up at the wooden staircase at the closing basement door. The back of his head throbbed. One of his costume feet had fallen to the side and Ben could see the tip of his light up sketchers. He wiggled his foot from side to side, wondering if the heel had lit up. I fell down the stairs as a child. I was not dressed as Clifford the Big Red Dog. I was actually dressed as a Ninja Turtle, and I rolled backwards down an open basement, uh, basement door. And so for me, that detail has always stuck out, mostly because I rolled down a set of basement stairs, dressed as a Ninja Turtle. Um, and I wanted to use that, but for the purposes of the novel, Name of Dogs, having him dressed as Clifford, a lot more effective, a lot more memorable. Um, and in the, the novel, his father is an alcoholic who pushes him. That never happened. And so being able to take parts and move them so that it moves the story along and it sticks out, not just for the character in the novel, but for the readers of the novel. And this is all well and good, this moving and shredding and stuff. Um, 
but it doesn't have to only be in a novel or in a short story. Um, what we do as people, we are all storytellers. We are all cannibals when it comes down to it. Um, and what we have to know is that we don't need the, the minutia of everyday life to get back to stories real quick. We, we don't find out a lot of when a, a writer or a character in a book uh, goes to bed or eats or showers or any of those things. Those things that everyone does, we don't need to know them and we don't need to give them in a story because when we introduce ourselves to someone or when we meet someone for the, the first time or anything like that, we're automatically cannibalizing our own lives. We're going through, for me, 26 years of history, of lines, of anything that sticks out to introduce myself to a person or whatever. And so as cannibals, we have to pick apart those, those little details, those minutia, in order to tell a story. And you may not think of yourself as a storyteller, but as I said, everyone is. Whether you're a newscaster telling the daily events for millions of people, or even if you're just requesting someone to play Candy Crush 35 times a day just because you want whatever those lives are or anything, that, those are both telling stories. They're telling different stories, but they're still telling stories. And so when you do that, you're picking, you're pulling, you're moving, you're cannibalizing it. And so we pick out what is memorable and we find the things that will stick with other people. Um, a lot of the times, probably the easiest way to, to think about this is to think about movies. And a lot of my friends quote movies endlessly. And most of the time in really bad accents that just come out of nowhere and we quote them and we do that. And we do that because those lines are memorable. Whatever the movie is, those things stick out. And so I want to try something. I'm going to start a line and I'm really hoping that maybe two people in here at least have seen this. Um, Anchorman, kind of a big deal. Um, but I'm going to start the line, and I want to see how many people can finish the line. So it starts, you ate a whole wheel of cheese? I'm not mad. I'm Thank you. I'm impressed. <laughs> so for me, that sticks out because it involves Baxter, and I love the character of Baxter and Anchorman. It sticks out for whoever answered, thank you, uh, for whatever reasons, because it's funny, whatever. These are the things that we need to do when we are telling stories uh, to have an effective story. I, I work in town at a local brewery, Persimmon Hollow Brewing, and we, we have our own story. We're not just selling beer. Anyone can go down to the store and pick up a case of cheap beer. What you can't do necessarily as easily is, or what well, you can do, you can come down when it opens and buy the beer from us, but you're not just getting a beer. You're not getting a pint of beer or a growler or whatever. You're getting the beer plus the story and everything behind it. We're choosing details depending on who we're talking to that make it a significant exchange. It's not just a glass of red ale. It's the fact that three guys have bonded over making beer for over a year now, and they're trying to produce the best stuff that they can. It's not just any of those things. We pick and we choose those details. And so in each of those interactions, we're telling stories, just like anyone else can tell a story. The person who drinks that beer can go and tell a story about whoever they saw behind the bar pouring that beer, or what they saw on the way there, or whatever will stick out, whatever will be remembered, that's what they're going to do, and that's what you need to do as a storyteller. Um, it's also important to remember that there's a difference between facts and truth. You can tell a true story, and there don't have to be any facts in it. You know, we use novels, we use short stories, things like the Bible, any of those are telling stories and they're telling truths, but they don't necessarily have facts. Um, and it's important to remember that because the moment we speak something, the moment that we tell someone a story, we may be telling them the truth, but we're not necessarily telling them facts because the moment it leaves your mouth, the moment you've interpreted it, you've, you've cannibalized it, you've changed it, you've put your own bias into it, and you've altered that event. Even if you have a transcript, even if you have a photo, even if you remember it perfectly with a, a perfect memory, you're still changing it and you're still cannibalizing that event, picking out what you remember or what you think are the most important points of that scene, that event, whatever it is. You're doing that and you're doing it on uh, sometimes possibly even an unconscious level. So being able to pick out those important things, super important. It's not important a lot. Um, and 
I think it's also when we think about cannibalizing, um, if you were to literally eat a friend or a family member or something like that, you would not put them in a pot, Bugs Bunny style, and hope that they would cut up some carrots and onions and you know, cook themselves. You wouldn't eat them all at once. That would be disgusting and it would, you would fill up and it would not, just wouldn't be good. Um, instead, you would, you would pick them apart. You would take pieces from here and from here and put them together to find a new flavor, a new something that tastes a lot better than just eating the entire person, whoever it may be. Um, and so, just like you would do that, you need to have a discerning palate when you tell a story. There's a big difference between a four-star restaurant and a buffet. You need to be able to find those pieces that make the four-star restaurant as good as it is and use those to tell a story that someone will remember and someone will want to tell to other people. Thank you.